Hey, it's Jake, and today I'm gonna to be talking about mats in After Effects, and we're gonna cover all different kinds of mats, what they are, how they work, and what types of scenarios each one is gonna be useful for. Let's get started. You might already be familiar with track mats, but the concept behind what they actually are, what the different terms mean, might be a little bit confusing, and that's because the terms used to describe these different types of mats don't make a lot of sense on their own. So I'm going to walk you through all of the different types of track mats in After Effects and kind of demystify this whole process for you. So I have this background pattern animation, which I'm borrowing from one of my Skillshare classes, and I've got some text on top of it. So I want to try and contain the pattern within the text. To do that, I'll be using a track mat. And to find your track mats, you're gonna to need to come to this column right here. If you don't see this column, you probably don't have this switch enabled. Make sure that you have that turned on and you'll have a track mat column. If you still don't see it, then right click, go to columns and say modes. That will enable or disable that column. So there you go, track mats. Now the way that a track mat actually works in After Effects is through a relationship between two layers. And those two layers will be right on top of each other. So let's start with the pattern layer and the track mats text layer. The track mat that you set it to will pull its information from the layer directly above it. So in this case, the text layer. Underneath the track mat menu, we have four options. Alpha mat, alpha inverted mat, luma mat, and luma inverted mat. And we'll walk through each one of these. I want to select alpha mat, and you see that it puts track mats, that's the name of the layer above it, right there after it. So you know this is the layer it's going to be pulling from. I'll click that and immediately the text is now filled with that pattern. The pattern is no longer filling up the screen, it's only fitting into that text. And that's because we set it to an alpha mat. And that means that it is basing this mat off of the alpha channel of this layer. And if you're not familiar with what an alpha channel is, it's literally the opacity of the layer above it. So whatever pixels this layer is generating, the alpha channel values of that layer will be applied to the layer we set the track mat to. And I can change the text if I scale it up or change the font. Everything is going to update because it's based on the alpha of that layer. I'll undo. And you'll notice that it also turned that layer off. It's not visible anymore. If I turn it back on, then it's hiding the layer directly below it. So when you add a track mat, it's going to automatically hide the layer that's being used as the track mat. You'll also notice that we have these two icons indicating that this is a layer receiving the alpha mat and this is the layer being used as the alpha mat. That little icon kind of looks like a mask and I think this one has kind of like a transparency grid like we would have in the background here. And the next option in our list was alpha inverted mat. If I click on that, then it's gonna use the alpha channel basically as a hole punch. It's gonna take the alpha and invert the mat so that whatever this layer is showing up on will be transparent. If I turn off my background, you can see that we have transparency there in the background. So it's punching a hole into that layer. I'll set that back to alpha mat for now. And then I'll duplicate this pattern layer because I want to use it on this text as well. So duplicate, and you'll notice that the alpha mat was preserved and it's using the top layer as an alpha mat, but because I duplicated it, After Effects doesn't automatically turn off the layer that's directly above it because maybe you wanted to duplicate that mat, but the layer that just happens to be above it isn't the one you wanted to use for a track mat. So make sure that you go and turn that layer's visibility off, and now we can see that pattern within it. Now, if I were to reverse this order, I'll turn the alpha mat off of the pattern, grab the track mat layer, put it below the pattern, and set it as an alpha mat of the pattern, we just get our blue text again. And that's because the pattern is the size of my comp. See, it's not paying attention to anything about what's in it. It's only looking at the alpha channel. If I turn it back off and scale it down, as soon as the edges get shrunken in past the edges of that text, you see that it's starting to go away. And that's because there are transparent pixels on the outside of this layer now. So you really need to think about the order of your layers when using track mats. And since this is based on the alpha channel, we could take this a little bit further and say, add a Venetian blinds effect to my text, and then set my completion to like 25. And now I've got these lines, I'll change it to be 90 degrees, turn the width down, and now that kind of looks like scan lines. 
But the point is you can adjust the transparency of your matte layer to manipulate the transparency of the layer with the matte applied. Now we have two other options, Luma Matte and Luma Inverted Matte. So for this, I'm going to use a different layer for the track matte. So let me turn these off. I'll get rid of the second copy of the pattern. And I'm just gonna make a new solid command or control Y and I'll make it black. And then I'll make another solid and change this one to be white. And I'll apply that same Venetian blinds effect to it. Change the completion to 50 and the width. I'll turn that up. All right, so now I have these two bars. I'm gonna pre-compose these. Command Shift C, Control Shift C on a PC and call this Luma Matte. And I'll place that directly above the pattern and point out that this layer is completely solid. There is no transparency at all to it. But when I go to pattern and I change my track mat to Luma Matte, you see that we have transparency. I'll turn off my background and there you go. There are holes being punched through this layer based on the alpha of this Luma Mat. So why is this happening? Well, Luma is short for luminosity. So it, instead of looking at the alpha channel of this layer, it's looking at the brightness values of the pixels. 100% black gives you zero opacity, 100% transparent, and 100% white gives you purely opaque, 100% opaque, no transparency at all. But what makes this powerful is that it relates all of the values of gray in between pure black and pure white to a transparency value. So I could say add a curves to this layer. And remember, this is just black and white bars, but if I bring up the blacks a little bit, now they're not perfectly black, and I bring down the whites a little bit, now I don't have pure white or pure black. I'll turn that matte off again, and now you see that I have semi-transparent pixels. So it's taking those gray values between pure white and pure black and mapping them to opacity values. This is really, really beneficial for when you're doing things like texturing. If you wanna base your opacity of a layer on an actual maybe photo texture. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just gonna pull in this plaster texture that I have and rotate it so that it's vertical instead of horizontal and scale it down. Now this has a bunch of variation in brightness or luminance. It has some whiter spots, it has some darker spots, and I can take that layer and just drag it directly above the pattern layer and it's automatically gonna look at that as my Luma mat since that was already set. And then I'll just hide that layer and now that texture is being applied to the opacity of the pattern layer. Again, I'll turn my transparency grid on so you can see that there actually are transparent values through there. If I turn my background on and make it a bright color like red, you can really see that coming through. So it's ignoring all of the color information of this and purely looking at the brightness values. So even though there's a little bit of a green tint to this image, it's throwing that out. It's only looking at the brightness values of that image. And just like alpha matte has an alpha inverted matte option, I can do the same thing for luma matte. So if I want this part that's red, that's showing through to actually be opaque instead of transparent, I'll just switch this to luma inverted matte. And now my layer is much more transparent than it was. You can see a lot more of the transparency grid there. Now let's say that I don't like the way that this texture is looking. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more contrasty, not so faded out. Well, again, I can apply a curves layer to my texture, the layer that's being used as the Luma mat, and then just give it a contrast curve. And now those brightest pixels are brighter, those darker pixels are darker, and my texture is much more noticeable. And again, I could just switch this back to Luma mat to see a lot more of my pattern. And I can even grab this layer and just move it around. I can reposition it however I want, and the mat is going to update with it. So these are very, very powerful tools to understand and know how to use. They come in handy for things like texture or just containing certain elements within the shape of another one. But those are not the only matte tools that you have at your disposal inside of After Effects. Let me disable this Luma mat, and I'll actually turn off the pattern, turn my text back on. And let's say I wanna apply that same texture to these text layers. Well, I could you know, do the same thing, set these to Luma Matte uh, and duplicate this layer, set it to a Luma Matte as well, and there's my texture, uh, but it's not really showing up on this one, so I might need to move it around, but 
let's say I want it to line up with this one, well then I'll have to move it around until I'm happy with the spot. It's just a little bit difficult to deal with. Well, there's actually an effect we can use inside of After Effects that can make this process a little bit easier and use less layers. So let me delete this one and I'll set this one back to no track mat. And I'll just set the rotation back down to zero, get rid of that curves and center this up on the screen. And I'll fit it to the comp width by pressing command option shift H and just send it all the way down to the background. I don't even need to see it. And I'll apply an effect to this text layer called set mat. Now I need to tell this effect where to pull the mat from. Take mat from layer and it's just set to the text layer. I want to go down to plaster white dirty. That's the texture layer. I'll click on that and nothing happens. And that's because the use for mat is set to alpha channel. There is no transparency to this layer, so that's why nothing has changed. However, I want to change this from the alpha channel to the luminance. Now I have that texture showing through. And if I apply this curves layer again to that texture and increase the contrast, nothing's happening. And that's because I need to en enable one more feature. Under take mat from layer, there's a second drop down that says source. I can change this from source to effects and masks. And that's going to take into account both the effects I apply to that layer and the masks that are applied to that layer. Otherwise, it's just looking at the image with no effects applied. So I'll do that, and now my texture has more contrast to it. I can invert the mat right here. That's the same as saying Luma inverted mat under the track mats. Stretch mat to fit is going to modify the texture to fit the layer. And because this is a text layer, it's a vector, this effect is actually looking at the layer as if it was the size of the comp. So this is effectively taking the texture layer and then saying transform fit to comp. So that's why you can see that texture is showing up a little bit distorted. It's not preserving the aspect ratio. If you need to preserve that aspect ratio, uncheck stretch mat to fit. Now, if I grab this texture layer, which we can't see it, that's fine, and move it around, nothing is happening. That is one downside to this effect, is that you can't do things like rotate the layer and have it actually affect the mat on the set mat effect. But if we add another effect to that texture called transform, it gives me all the same transform controls that a layer would normally have, but as an effect. So now I can rotate the texture, and because we have the effects and masks selected, that is now affecting the actual mat. So I can do things like rotate it, scale it up or down, and reposition it however I want until I'm happy with it. And if I like the way that that looks, then I can just copy this set mat and paste it onto the other text layer. So that's a very, very powerful effect to be able to apply textures or just base layers alpha channels on a single source layer instead of having to have multiple copies of the same mat layer. Another way of using layers as mats is through this little switch right here. It has a T on it, and what it stands for is Preserve Underlying Transparency. So I'm actually going to turn off my background layer, turn my pattern back on, and move it above the text layers. And I don't need these plaster layers or that luma mat anymore. And I'll get rid of the luma mat. There we go. Okay, so underneath this pattern layer is just two text layers. There's transparency all around it, nothing else in it. With this layer above those layers, if I click this little switch, that pattern is now pulling the alpha channel from the layers below it. I'll turn off my transparency grid so you can see we're getting that exact same effect as we did in the first example because it's preserving the underlying transparency. So all of the opacity values that are below this layer in the layer stack have their alpha channels being applied to that pattern. If I move it below the what's the deal with, then it's not taking any information off of that layer, just the layers below it. Now this one is a much more specific case. Generally it only would work in a pre-comp because if you have a background layer, then it's gonna pull that alpha channel into it as well. But it is very worth knowing about. I'll turn that off and move the pattern back down below the text one more time. And then there's one final method for using mats in After Effects that I think you should know about and it's actually a blending mode. Actually, actually a couple of blending modes. So if I go to this menu 
we have stencil alpha, stencil luma, silhouette alpha, and silhouette luma. And I can never remember which one of these is which, but they correlate to alpha mat, alpha inverted mat, luma mat, and luma inverted mat. So if we set this to stencil alpha, we're back to having the pattern contained just within that layer. So stencil alpha is going to use this layer as an alpha mat for all of the layers below it. Even if I turn on the background, nothing's gonna change because anything outside of that layer is going to go transparent. If I turn the pattern off, there we see the background color through it, but it's not affecting this text layer and that's because it's above it. If I move it up, it goes away because that text is outside of this text layer's alpha mat. If I change it to silhouette alpha, then it's gonna punch a hole through anything below it. There we have our transparent pixels. Again, it's not affecting this text layer because it's not overlapping it. If I bring that text layer down, it disappears. That's another very powerful way to use a layer as a type of mat. And you can do the same thing with the luma. Again, stencil luma will use the layer's luminance value to assign a transparency value to all the layers below it. And because it's blue, it's looking at the brightness value, which is 94%. So it's technically applying a 94% opacity to that layer. If we set it to silhouette luma, then we're gonna get the opposite. So it should be around 6% transparent now. And this would probably look a little bit better if I pulled out my plaster image and set that to be silhouette alpha and then added some contrast to it. Oh, and actually not silhouette alpha, silhouette luma, and then added in some contrast. And now we're getting that texture. Maybe I should have used stencil luma instead of silhouette. Again, I told you, I never remember which one is which. And I feel like I always choose the opposite of what I actually want, but there you go. Now we have this layer's luminosity controlling the alpha of the entire comp with a blending mode. Mats are an awesome tool to know how to use inside of After Effects, but it's also really good to know all of your different options when it comes to mats. That way you can approach your specific problem from the angle that's gonna produce the best results. All right, that's all for this tutorial. I hope that you liked it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.